All right, welcome to my channel. This is Watch Up. What I am talking about today, or to kind of go over, is how I made this key for the Chris Capoon uh, Abloy High Profile uh, Disc Detainer Lock. So there are some things that need probably needed improving on this one uh, to get the key to work just a little bit smoother stuff and hopefully I'll I've got that corrected in what I show you today so first of all a couple things you need to know of course what profile are we going for so this is the profile we're going for and this is a high profile it's almost if you will and this is a key similar to it that fits this lock it's say, shaped like a C. So if I put that in there, it will go in and turn, but it won't unlock the lock. It'll allow it to turn to 90. So that's our profile we're going for. There are many different Abloy profile um, key styles. So like these two are two different. These are also high profile, but they don't have that C shape. They have kind of more of a flat, and they also, this one has an extra cut here. A profile at the bottom and this one has a profile that goes all the way down the center and a flat part that goes down the center so similar to the C but it's got some different shapes so first you have to know what profile are you trying to achieve this one is just the the, the classic C what I'll say is the C shape um, need to make it get a key obviously the easiest way is get a key blank and then decode the lock and just kind of cut the grooves. Um, key blanks can be kind of expensive depending on where you get them from. I've seen them as little as about four or five dollars a blank, as high as to over fifteen dollars a blank. So, and you still have to cut it. And if you mess up, you've just wasted uh, fifteen up to fifteen dollars. So, what I kind of did was I took I bought some brass rod. You don't have to use brass rod. Um, uh, but I bought some brass rod. I want to say, if I remember it, maybe I think it was five sixteenths. Maybe, yeah, five sixteenths brass rod. Um, because that's a little bit larger to um, what the key size is. Yes, yeah, just under eight millimeters and a high profile key is based off of a 7.4 millimeter diameter key so so that's the number kind of keep in mind um, the keys are 7.4 diameter key um, so that's kind of where i went you don't have to use rods another option is tubing if you can get tubing close to that it don't have to be 7.4 exact um you know as long as it's close to 7.4, you can use any kind of tubing. This is some stainless tubing. I could have used it and just kind of cut it in half or grind it in half and make a key out of it. It'll work, it'll turn the discs. Um, as long as it'll actuate, activate the discs and turn them, it'll work. Um, you can get some aluminum tubing. I saw that on um, eBay or Amazon, some like seven millimeter outside with a five millimeter inside that would work great you just have to cut it in half and then cut the keys in it um but what i did was basically and i used a lathe but you don't have to use a lathe is you could take a hand drill i drilled a four millimeter hole in the center and then i just turned this down to about 7.3 just to give me a little bit of clearance and play uh, so you could still do that with a drill. You could drill the center, you know, four millimeters with a regular drill bit, and then cut it and chuck this up into a drill and take a file, and while this is spinning, just file it down and get your right diameter. Uh, I, I'll probably have some clips playing up here of me having it in the lathe and stuff showing you how I did that, but I'm not gonna really go into that too much. Your next step is to get it to cut because the way the profile is, is to cut in half. When I did this key, I did it with a jeweler saw by eye and did the center and just cut it by eye. Well, I thought, well, maybe I could make a little jig to help me cut it with my 3D printer. Well, 
These are plastic. That saw will cut plastic. So if the blade decides to deviate, it's going to cut the jig. So I tried that. It didn't work out as well. So I just recommend cutting it by eye. Cutting, you know, once you get this, or tubing, cut it by eye. You can kind of cut it to one side. So that way you can come back and file it down to the half diameter, you know, the 3.7 millimeters, half, you know, half the diameter. That way you don't take a chance of ruining both sides. You just want one side, you know, that side. You can save the other side and make a turner for it if you want, like here. Here was the other half of the first side I did. That'd make a great, if I put a little handle on it, make a great little turner for when I'm picking them for seed. I can silver solder or something, a little handle on that and work just fine. I did use it to do some test cuts, but that's not going to bother it. So, all right, we've got the profile picked out. Now we need to know the cuts. Well, or another thing we need to know is how far are these discs spaced? If you look at these two keys, if you look from here to here, that's seven cuts. Look at this key from here to here is seven cuts. But when I put them together, that's not the same <laughs> dimension. So be mindful of your disc thickness. The disc thickness with this style, the larger one, when I measured, I did have one that was guttable and I did measure it. And the, the disc themselves measured 1.55 millimeters and the spacers were coming up 0.45 for a total of two millimeters total another great resource is to go on the tools uh netherlands website and they've got these great uh abloy manuals that uh i know i'm gonna pronounce it wrong hand uh made and they're excellent they have a lot of information about abloy so that's a great place to start all right so once got the disc spacing, we need to know the bidding. How do we get the bidding? Well, I got the bidding from this one by picking it and then taking my pick and kind of going back through. I had it zeroed. Uh, I should have got my pick out, but let me demonstrate it if it's in here. It is. So this one, I use the RWB and when I put the tips together let's see all right when i put the tips together they're equal the picking tip and attention tip the first line lines up with this bottom line so after i got it picked i went back and i um kind of decoded it if you will using this bottom line and using these numbers so when i do that the way abloy counts their cuts is the a no cut, if you will, or almost zero cut, is actually a one cut. It's a one cut, a two cut, three cut, four cut, five cut, up to six. Okay, and each one is kind of 18 degrees between each cut for this style. When they go to the next one, which is one or zero through six, they're, you know, they're 15 degrees. But this one's set up already kind of for the 18 degree, which is kind of a pretty good standard um, for most disc detainers. So the, I use this to decode it. And once I decoded it, this was my that code that I came up with. So, so the first disc is what the key, if you look at a key, the way the profile works, the first disc is rear tension. So the first disc is always a one cut. It's what tensions or turns the lock. And from there, you know, you can't put your picking tip on it. Your tip's already, this tip's already on it. So I basically came up when I decoded it. It was four, one, three, two, three, one, two, four, two, one. So that was what I decoded. All right. And so how do we, you know, how do we get those cuts or whatever? So to lay your key, let's see, where's my key blank? So this is the key blank I've come up with this time. So this is this aluminum bar, drilled at four millimeters and then cut in half and I filed it down and I, I probably showed some video of that going through all that. So this is my blank. So what I need to do is lay out 
kind of this bidding and cut it into each one. Well, how do we lay that out? So for me experimenting, the best I can way to tell you is if you got a small ruler, you can make little marks. So start at, you come out three millimeters. So this first one is three millimeters because it not only is it the disc spacing, it goes in past the disc just a little bit. So for my, and the way I figured that is I kind of measured all my keys and the average was right about three millimeters on this first, um, that first cut. Okay. So, and then in between each cut is two millimeters. So if you want, you can take a Sharpie and mark two millimeters and that'll be where you'll need to cut or the, the spacing you need to cut for each of the key bidding. It kind of helped me out to do that. Of course, you know, I like to come up with 3D printed stuff. So what I did here is I've got my cuts and what I'm gonna use to do the cuts with is a jeweler saw. Okay. And the way this thing is laid out, it has marks that kind of tell me where I need to cut at what angle based off of these marks for whatever cut. So starting with Let's see, a zero cut, or excuse me, a one cut is here, then you have a two cut, and then it should start hitting the little marks, three cut, four cut, five cut, and then all the way up and down is a six cut. Okay, so this is just to guide me with the jeweler saw to make my initial cuts. Um, so what I'm going to kind of do now and also i've got two of these because 3d printer you know kind of getting two millimeter spacers here is a little tough sometimes so these are actually four millimeters and i kind of got my even cuts on one and my odd cuts on the other and i'm going to mark that out and cut them so when you do your cuts so like when i need to do a cut between this one and four I need to cut to the deepest cut. So here I need to cut it a four. Even here I need to cut it a four. Go on the other side here. My deepest is a three. I'll cut here as a three on this key. Here I'll cut as a three. There I'll cut as a three. That'll be a three. This will be a two. This will be a four. Then a two and a two. Since this is, last one is a one, I don't need to cut because a one is no cut. So that last one I technically won't need to cut. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna kind of lay this, help me lay this out. I'm gonna make some marks on this paper just for me to know basically for my templates. So I know these are just spacing every two and then this one is for my odd one. This kind of helps me keep track of what I need to cut. All right, so, and technically there is a cut here, but I don't want to cut that one. So, so when I'm looking at my little jig here, I don't need to cut that one. So the way my jig works is I put it in, put the blank all the way in, and then let's see. So my first cut, so I'll talk to this one. This is my first one's gonna be a four, and then I'm gonna kind of fast forward through the rest so so what I need to do here is determine where a four cut would be with this so let's see like I said this starts with a two here two three four so I need to these are the kind of center of the blade so the blade needs to kind of go like when I'm cutting it, it needs to end, end up right here so I'm just doing this by eye so my first cut We'll do a four. And I'll pull this out and, and show it to you after I do this one cut. And then after that, I'm gonna kind of just either fast forward through it all or so. Kind of awkward to hold and cut where you can see it, so.
Alright, so you pretty well got that cut between which that second circle or the first one on this side and the first one on that side, that is a four cut. So that one's cut. I'll show you what that is real quick. I'm gonna pull it out just so you can see it. And then the uh, rest I'm gonna kind of just fast forward through, through my cuts. Alright, so there's that first cut. Right there, I hope that's showing up. So that should be to the depth of a four cut I'm using my little jig. Um, so, all right, I'm gonna continue on, fast forward, and when I get all the cuts done, I'll you know, come back and talk about what, what to do next. All right, so I've got my first cuts done, but following the bidding, so maybe this will help show it. So if I connect these two, there's a four. The next one's a one, which is basically no cut. Then I go to a, let's see, it should be a three, which is right there. This one will be a two, which is kind of about there. And then this one will be a three. And then a one, then a two, then a four, then a two. Okay, so that's kind of, I've got the cuts made. Now I need to do is take the material out of that. So to do the first material removal, I'm going to go to the Dremel. I've got a um, kind of a carbide uh, abrasive bit on it or an abrasive bit then I'm going to just sand those out um, I'll show you I'll do the video while I'm, I'll video that while I'm doing it then we'll come back up here and finish it up by hand all right so I'm at the Dremel so basically I'm just going to do cuts down to the kind of the lines already done and if I can't see the line um, I have the bidding here so I know about how deep or what a cut should be just in case I rub the sharpie off as I cut the shallow cuts I'll probably kind of turn the key more flat because these are based off of the center of a circle and then as I do deeper cuts I'll kind of turn it trying to keep that center line if you will pretty good so uh, it's gonna be loud so I'll probably turn the volume down um, so you don't have to hear all that loud whining mm -hmm. So, got the initial well, initial shaping done. We'll go back and do the rest with a file. All right, so back up at the table on my workstation. Um, the files I'll be using, let's see. Got a little, these are jeweler files. I got a little triangle one. Let's see what else. This one, this I've got a real small square one that that seems to work pretty good. So what I'm gonna do right now is just try to clean up, square up some of my cuts because that is a round Dremel bit, and I did kind of nick some of the other ones. So just trying to go through for right now. Give me a little bit of a flat edge in the bottom and smooth it out get some of the burrs off um, clean up the cuts
Still kind of rough, but we'll just. What's the chances? Where is my pair of pliers? Nope. So somebody is just not right. Okay. That's fine. All right. So something I used with the other one to really help me fine tune this is I had a core from one of those other locks that was removable, you know, since these are not removable. If you, if you can remove the core, you're golden. You can just look right at it and see what you need to change. So I'll turn these and see what kind of needs it. So... so Alright, so definitely we can see that this four, something's snagging that four and it's staying with the two. So it must be rubbing it against the two and need to clean that two up. That four needs to go probably a little bit deeper, but that's it. So we'll clean up on the fours and see how we do there. So I'm getting a burr or something on the fours. looks much better. That too looks like it's a little high. But so let me check that too. Just give it a little bit of a filing flat. I'll see a few burrs on it. Just take a like a wire brush to it because I think some of the burrs are grabbing the discs, but it looks pretty good. Let's give Slinky a try again. All right, so that is a key made. So that is how I kind of do my key making. I know you, there's probably tools most people may not have, but I think with drill and stuff, you can do some of the same things. You don't have to have these 3D printed jigs. They do help. I will be putting these on Thingiverse for anybody that wants to use them. Uh, if you have questions about them or whatever, feel free. Uh, but I'm going to just finish cleaning this up um kind of deburring it and uh checking it out and make sure everything's working good all right so that's the key let me show you the final well not the final but i'll probably come back on after i polish it up a little bit so give me a few minutes i'll cut here and come back after i clean those cuts up show you what the final one looks like all right so done some of the finishing work on the key looks pretty good squared up kind of filed on rough edges kind of took a wire brush to it got some of the burrs down um i just need to put some kind of bow on it so i can turn it by hand instead of you know it's kind of hard to turn that little shaft so um i'm gonna go work that out and put a little bow on or some kind of uh, bow for the key or whatever you want to call it so i can get a little bit of twist on it um so depending on how long that takes i may add that after this but if not thanks for watching if you have questions leave a comment and i'll try to answer it all right thanks for watching all right so here's kind of the finished with a little this bow or something on it so I can 
use it. It does work. So there's the finished bit. And I silver soldered a little brass nugget on there. I cut off of a larger bar, sanded it down a little bit, and then silver soldered it on. So now Slinky has a working key. All right. Thanks for watching again.